Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, the, the numbers are already piling in and more to come as we get started. And we have a wonderful collection of stories to share with you today. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out to my team backstage. Uh, we have Madison Irving, Khadija Muhammad, Jessica Rubin, uh, and Zeb Davis helping out from our Mount Sinai Spotlight Committee, producing this event with a bunch of eager celebrants uh, and panelists ready to present to you uh, backstage. Our committee members from the Mount Sinai Spotlight Committee, who are the folks who are really committed to both the patient experience and the employee experience, who lead recognition and appreciation efforts at our many sites around the health system are going to be the ones reading the stories that we have to share with you today. We've also got some exciting new features. Zoom continues to advance and we're going to be the first to bring you those advancements. So you should find a resources button that's new in your Zoom experience. And in there, we've put a link to our event program, as well as a PDF of that program. You can follow along, you can see some photos and some more information about our celebrants, as well as some stories in writing for some honorees who couldn't be here today. We're gonna share and highlight those as I go. Um, but this is our 27th episode of Beyond the Badge. And for our folks who keep coming back, mostly our leadership team who continues to be inspired by these stories month after month, uh, you know what to expect. But if you're a newbie, you're here to celebrate someone, a family member, a friend, uh, these stories are originally shared on our system daily huddle. It's a very private huddle and we collect them so we can share them out with a public audience. Uh, and to give a little more information about that and where these stories come from and how they're shared by our executive leadership, I wanna call on one of our leaders who leads that huddle and has heard these stories for several years uh, on a daily basis. And that's Swati Garg. She's our Senior Director of Health System Operations. And Swati, I know you love to hear these daily stories and we thank you and Joseph Mary and Hillary Pauly for getting these to us every month. And I'd love to let you talk a little bit, a bit more about the process. Sure, thank you so much, Steve. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today on, on the episode. Um, I'm so privileged, you know, to be in the Zoom room with today's honorees who, as you mentioned, they've each been recognized by their leadership for their commitment to excellence and really going above and beyond. So since the system huddle was launched in May of 2019, which is almost five years now, which is hard to believe. Big anniversary, um, five years. Yeah, it's almost we're almost hitting our five year our five year mark. Um, you know, our system executive leadership thought it critically important that we include an employee recognition each and every day, which mm -hmm. we have done so since, you know, we kicked off the huddle, uh, minus a few weeks during, you know, the height of COVID. But during each morning system huddle and the report outs, we hear the daily operational metrics, the escalations for the day and other sort of operational business to set up our leaders for a successful day. And we also then take a pause. You know, the health system senior leadership takes a pause while one leader shares a recognition story. Mm -hmm. And these are the stories that populate today's episode. Um, and it's a powerful and really daily reminder that our colleagues are our best asset and really drive the human experience at Mount Sinai. Um, what I love about this program, Steve, now your 27th episode, you know, remarkable, is that these powerful moments, as you said, they're going beyond the system huddle. And mm -hmm. we really get a chance to celebrate and recognize our colleagues with all of the, the individuals here today. Um, we get to meet everybody. We get to hear from them directly. Mm -hmm. We get to share in their pride and really congratulate them on their recognition. So let me add my congratulations to each and every one who is being recognized today. Um, and just a thank you to you, Steve, and the team for creating this space and really elevating our exceptional team members at Mount Sinai. It is easily, as you said, the best hour of my week, probably the best yeah. hour of my month. So thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Swati. It is uh, congrats on five year anniversary of this very important uh, huddle. And we're so happy that uh, Mount Sinai leadership puts that commitment to recognition into every single huddle that allows us this space to, to celebrate them further. So welcome all who are, are new family, friends, colleagues of our celebrants today. 
But somebody who's not new, who attends a lot of these sessions, like our other leaders who come back month after month and who shares the Mount Sinai Hospital stories on the System Daily Huddle, is Dr. Sharish Huprakar, who I'd love to call up and, and allow you a chance to welcome our audience. Uh, he's our Chief Medical Officer from Mount Sinai Hospital. And Sharish, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Steve, for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. As you've mentioned, one of the privileges I have as the CMO is to celebrate one of our employees each month on the System Daily Huddle. We also, once a week, celebrate another employee um, at our hospital daily huddle that we call ESQ for Experience, Safety, and Quality, because mm -hmm. ultimately, all of these stars are really patient-centered, collaborative, and focus on teamwork to ensure that our patients get the best experience, the safest care, and the highest quality of care. And I'm incredibly grateful for everyone who does that uh, at Mount Sinai Hospital. Um, I think that, and that's really, every story is different, which makes mm -hmm. this so much fun. But I think the, the core that ties them all together is that sort of patient-centeredness and collaboration and teamwork. So congratulations to all of our honorees today. It's, it's a, it, again, it's an honor to be here to celebrate with you. Thank you. You're, you're absolutely right. I think our audience will see how they all align in certain ways around certain values and around things like teamwork, but you'll also see how unique these different stories are as we go around our health system to so many different uh, facilities and so many different roles that we're going to be able to highlight today. So thank you, Sharish. Enjoy the stories. And to all our leaders out there, thank you for coming back uh, over and over again each month to hear our collection. I want to jump right into it. So if you're looking at our program, we break things into four categories. Uh, or actually five. We're going to start with a couple of our big teams because we got large groups and a couple of teams that were recognized by patients. Uh, and we want to be able to let some of them get back to uh, caring for patients. So we're going to go to them first. And then we go to our appreciation by patient section, which is a lot of patient letters that are shared and the stories come from that. We have our stories of excellence section, which are some one-time remarkable moments that were captured and shared. Next, we go to our appreciation by colleagues, which often come from our star appreciation. If you've never given a star to someone, think of someone to say thank you to today. We left that in our resources as well, a link to star. If you're on Mount Sinai's network, you can send a peer appreciation, and sometimes it gets all the way to this level. Uh, and then finally, we'll wrap with our spotlight section, highlighting some specific work or projects being done around our health system. So I'm going to jump into it. Like I said, the people reading the stories are going to be our uh, spotlight committee members. I'm looking, do we have our first team? I had a team join right at the end. I'm looking for the Mount Sinai Hospital uh, Medical and Surgical Specialties team. Here we go. There's Selma with the team. Excellent. And we're going to have God's favorite GA from Mount Sinai Hospital. Share your story. All right, congratulations, everyone, and especially MSH teams. Today, we want to recognize and thank the amazing team in the med surge specialties in the CAM building. When there was a patient code in the waiting area, medical assistant Vincent Vasquez and registered nurse Cynthia Suarez were the first on scene, joined shortly thereafter by Dr. Joseph Vasilati and Dr. Avi Bitterman. The team performed CPR tirelessly until the patient was revived. The staff's caring di diligence, teamwork, and perseverance were instrumental in saving the patient's life. The entire med surge team remained calm and assisted in moving patients to another area. They did a phenomenal job of ensuring the area remained in order so that patients continue to be seen. We thank you for all you do, and especially for saving a patient's life. Wonderful, thank you, God's favor. I wanna to go to our audience, but keep those hearts fluttering up in reactions, I love to see that. And I see comments already coming in in the chat to cheer on this team. Make sure you send it to everyone so that they can see the messages you're sharing, not just to hosts, but to this group, there were 19 individual team members listed in this response. Um, who can share a bit about the teamwork demonstrated during this emergency and how everyone from that night, group of 19 played a role in the positive outcome, not only for this patient, but for, for all the patients and the guests and the employees in the area? Who wants to take the lead? I Well, I'll start. I just want to say thank you to my team because they it was so admirable to see how they worked so tirelessly to save the patient. And I'm just humbled by, by the experience. 
Yeah, thank you. Anyone from the team want to speak up? Not only saving the life of the patient, but for all that just everyone kind of reacted and cared for everyone in that environment at the time. Anyone else want to add what it was like to be a, a part of that moment and what you saw in the group that led to this outcome? Yeah, so I'll share my experience. I mean, it was great teamwork from all teams, the clinical teams, the admin team, we all came together. We saw a patient was in need. Um, our clinical team, the clinical team was... Uh, was very quick to act. Um, the admin team was very quick to help get the staff, um, the other staff members alerted because we had to uh, take our team mm -hmm. and our patients to the geriatric side. So even the geriatric side assisted us. You know, it was interdepartmental. It was between um, roles. It was just admirable to see everyone coming together to help save a patient's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Really wonderful. Unless anyone else wants to to jump in with a comment, it is a. Uh... A remarkable story, and like Sharish started with, most of these stories center around teamwork uh, and how critical that is, that this result wouldn't have happened if all 19 people who were involved didn't play their role and what they could do handling an emergency situation. So that teamwork came through because of the relationships you clearly already had and the culture of the team that when called upon really showed itself and then highlighted itself. So congratulations to you all. Thank you. All right. And thank you so much for organizing the group. <laughs> Congrats, all. We're going to go on to our, we have our Queens team. Mount Sinai Queens 4 East team was recognized uh, in a patient letter. Yeah. We're, I hear you. All right. We're going to bring it. <laughs> okay. I've got Nicole DeSimone who's ready to read this story about Mount Sinai Queens who was recognized in a beautiful patient letter. Good to see you all huddled up there. Nicole, I'm going to pass it to you. Thank you, Steve, and congratulations to everyone honored today, but I have the privilege of recognizing the incredible 4 East team at Queens that I am lucky to uh, work alongside with. So this was the letter we received from a patient's um, spouse. The spouse of a Mount Sinai Queens patient, who we will refer to as John for confidentiality, wrote to express their appreciation of the staff on 4 East following the patient's passing. It read, I, along with our family, want to tell you how much we appreciated the care and treatment John received during his hospital stay. His illness and his being away from home for such a long time made it difficult for him to maintain a positive outlook, but he received outstanding care from everyone on the unit. Throughout the day, nurses and aides would stop in for just a few minutes and say hello, ask how he was doing, see if he needed anything, and just help John not feel alone. They did this when I was there, but more importantly, they did it when there was no other visitors. This meant the world to John and me, and the difference it made cannot be measured. The staff took that extra step to help someone who was gravely ill and in need of a little more human contact to get through the day and night a little easier. You should be proud of the team you have at Mount Sinai, Queens. We will always remember it. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, I can applaud. <laughs> The applause ruckus, we can't hear, we just see it, but I, you know, this is the kinds of stories of why I keep tissues nearby, when I hear a heartfelt message from a patient or a family member in this case, and uh, this goes back to the culture of the team. It just happened. Probably none of you were thinking about what you were doing for this family compared to all your patients, but uh, can you speak or someone take the lead in speaking about the culture of this group and, and how, as a team, you passionately care for patients and families, as we witnessed in this example? Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for this recognition. Um, I'm just so happy, and I know the staff, they, they're thrilled to be recognized. And from the moment I read this letter of recognition from the family member, it spoke volumes of every staff member of how special they are. And we do, I mean, behind closed doors, you know, when we're in-house, I am you know, I am one of those people who are able to see how individual staff can give everything out to mm -hmm. every patient that comes. So, but I just want one of the staff to just say thank you because it's it's coming from all of them and a team. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So it's always nice to be recognized, but this is what we do. We do this. This is, we treat patients the way we would want to be treated. And I clearly remember this patient, mm -hmm. a special uh, event was his birthday. He spent his birthday with us. Mm -hmm. And I remember his wife, his family coming to visit. And, you know, we just made him feel at home. He was one of us. He was part of the team. So we cared for him just as we would care for any one of us. Yeah. It was 
pleasure taking care of him. And we, we truly appreciate that it made a difference to him and his family. Yeah. And it did. And you know, you know what you bring and you give to every patient and you know, it's caring, and you know, it's kind, and you know, it's meaningful, but still to hear a spouse like that, put it into a letter and remind you just the littlest things of just the kindness of talking and how important that was to not help him not feel alone is what's getting me choked up here. So <laughs> let's stop. But thank you all. A beautiful story that speaks thank volumes so about the team on, on four East. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you. Right, thank you all. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And thank you, Nicole. That's the team out at Mount Sinai, Queens uh, on 4 East. Um, I'm hanging in. We're going to try to jump through the Mount Sinai Beth Israel story, but uh, we're missing Gina. I'm going to move on. We're going to go to our appreciation by patients section. And just so everyone knows in our audience, we do skip around a little bit. It is a hospital, a health system. Sometimes we might go out of order from the program because people are with patients and bringing them backstage uh, when they can get a chance. So we'll be flexible as always. We show our agility uh, as a team here on Beyond the Badge of Mount Sinai Value for sure. I'm gonna go uh, and actually I wanna give a first story. You see Whitlin Bruno is the lead story in appreciation by patients. Just found out today, a family emergency, wasn't able to make it, we're so sorry, but I wanted to give a shout out. Her story is not in the program uh, because of uh, we expected her to be here, but uh, Medical Secretary Whitlin Bruno at Mount Sinai Doctors 57th Street uh, had a patient highlight her exceptional care, problem solving, and issue that the patient was having with a prescription. And her quick and kind response and solution left the patient referring to Whitlin as a gem that she wanted to shine the light on. So I just wanted to give that shout out uh, to Whitlin Bruno, who couldn't be here today. Uh, but I'm going to jump to the FPA Access Center. We have Elizabeth Hamblard as our next story we're going to go to. Hey, Elizabeth. Uh, How are you? to Sadiqa Horn from the FPA Access Center to read that story. Hi, Sadiqa. Hi, Sadiqa. Hi, Steve. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, the FPA Access Center is just honored and thrilled to recognize Elizabeth Hamblard today. Thank you. A patient's family member writes, my mother has active TB and it has many symptoms which are concerning to us. I am currently residing overseas and I called to make an appointment for a liver function test and had the best experience with your most dedicated employee. I would like to let you know how much I appreci appreciate Elizabeth Hamlard and the liver gastroenterology department. Elizabeth is an employee who is profoundly compassionate, caring, highly professional, and dedicated to helping the patient in need, our 87-year-old mother. She is very efficient, humbled, immensely experienced, and truly a stellar employee. Elizabeth is clearly first-rate brilliance in her field, and above all, she has a heart. She sincerely cares to help the patients in a very calm, caring manner. Thank you, Elizabeth, for providing exceptional services to our patients. We truly appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sadiqa. You know, it touches me to, to picture this person caring for their mother while well across the world, overseas, and the stress that already puts on that person and the worry they already have, and then they speak to you. And I think this recognition was really balanced in that it highlighted both your professionalism and experience, which they highlighted, as well as your compassion and your heart. And I'm wondering if you could talk about how you combine these two skills yes, uh, yes. When, you, when you talk with patients. I, yes, I, I wrote a little something. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. So uh, for me, it's really simple. Um, I have been in this medical field over 18 years and I have found leading with compassion has always been the best approach. Um, every time I answer a client, I imagine my parents or any family member of mine that could be in the other receiving end. Mm -hmm. um, I combine compassionate approach and my professional expertise together to ensure patients feel supported and receive the best care possible. I strive to make every patient interaction a positive one by answering their questions and to the best of my knowledge and ensuring that I'm clear and concise. I am dedicated to making a positive impact on everyone that I come in contact with. <laughs> Beautiful, Elizabeth. Thank and we I, I speak for our whole audience. We can feel the spirit and kindness and joy coming from you right now that I'm sure <laughs> it goes you. through the phone to people Thank across you. the world we see <laughs> as you support them. And, and I love your purpose statement in, in two ways. How you picture the person at the other end as a family member. Yes. That leads how you're going to interact with them. And then having that goal of the best patient care possible. Yes. 
that yeah. that's my goal for them. And when you start with that in your mindset, we see the results that it's having. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely beautiful. Go into the chat and see how everyone's cheering for you and loving what oh, you're yes, doing. Oh, yes. I see. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Sadika. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep moving now. I'm uh, on the lookout. Did we get Dr. Harry Lee uh, here? I think we may still be missing. I'm gonna come back uh, to Dr. Lee in a moment. You see him in the program. We're gonna see if he can get away from uh, for a moment and talk with us. So Andres Marrero, I'm gonna stick with Mount Sinai West and we have Barbara Mejas standing by, our, one of our nurses from Mount Sinai West who's here and we're gonna go to that story next. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. So really excited to speak about this story. While recovering from abdominal surgery at Mount Sinai West, a patient wrote a letter to leadership stating, quote, I had the pleasure of working with Barbara and I wanted to take the time to acknowledge what a wonderful nurse she is. I know Barbara has numerous patients on the floor, but she never made me feel like she did. She always took her time to explain the medications she was giving to me and, and answered all of my questions regarding said medications. She also spoke to me with compassion and kindness during emotional moments I had throughout the day. She spoke words of encouragement to me and didn't mind reassuring me during these times that I was doubting myself. I am extremely grateful for Barbara's dedication to her patients and I appreciate the hard work she put into my care during my stay here." End quote. Thank you so much, Barbara, for being a valued member of our 10A surgical team and congratulations. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Andres. And, you know, I, there was an additional message from your leadership, Barbara, who wanted to add that, you know, this is an example of how you every day truly embody the professional practice model of relationship centered care. And I wonder if you could speak to that commitment that you make to putting the patient at the center of, of everything you do every day. And you're on mute right now, Barbara. We'll bring you off, off mute. Let you let you roll. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, first, I just want to get like the emotions out of the way because this was a uh, um, a surprise. I come to work to do my job as a nurse, and um, for me, it's working with the patients. You know, creating that relationship for them to trust me. Um, being in the hospital inpatient is a traumatizing experience for some. And I try to do my best to make the connection to have them feel that they're not alone, you know. Um, some more than others, I just try to pick up on their, for some reason, I don't know what it is, people call me like an empath. So I pick up on the emotions of the patients, not just their diagnosis, but, you know, their feelings. Um, sometimes... Um, I find that patients feel like they can trust me more. So I find out a little bit more of what's going on with them other than just them being there. Um, and I try to go to work every day to um, be a part of their care, their road to recovery. And um, I just want them to know that there's someone that's with them throughout my 12 hour shift, you know, that they can rely on and, you know, that their needs are met you know, to the best of my abilities and like the expectations. And um, I look at that as, you know, I want to have someone uh, for myself if I'm in, ever in that position. Um, my mother is a longstanding patient uh, of Mount Sinai. And I've seen the dedication of, you know, other nurses. And, you know, I'm just grateful and thankful and proud to say that I'm now part of that nursing team. Absolutely. Beautiful. So well said, Barbara. And love it. And so much love. And and hop off in the chat. We just love what you're you're saying. And it was an example. You talked about the relationship, how building the relationship was so important to be able to have that empathy and build something and build that trust and the difference that it makes. And you actually went back to talk about what we talked about with the, the first team, just not letting them feel alone. And we saw from that very first team that, a, that what made the difference for that family was that they knew the patient didn't feel alone by the, the staff that were there. So just beautiful, well said, and thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad the patient took the time to write about their experience with you. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you, Barbara. Andres, hang with me for a second because I got to give a shout out. Next week, if people didn't know, we're hearing these beautiful patient letters right now. Next week is Patient Experience Week. We've put the Patient Experience Week calendar in the resources tab here. So check out lots of great events. And I see that you are co-facilitating with Erica Rubenstein. The keynote event the next Thursday is the uh, Patient Experience Forum, if you want to share a quick word on that. Absolutely. No, thank you, Steve. And just a reminder, we are all very excited to celebrate patient experience. It is all of you, all of the staff and caregivers that make up Mount Sinai, that make that patient experience uh, truly happen. Um, so as Steve said, you know, really wonderful, excited that we're going to host a very exciting patient experience forum next week. We have a very lovely patient story. Uh, we had the pleasure of her coming to Mount Sinai West a few weeks ago, uh, and I'm not going to give away uh, any details of that video, but we will certainly share that uh, the webinar link uh, and please tune in. It's yeah. a beautiful story and you're going to need your tissues. That's what I heard. <laughs> I'm going to need them close by, so I'll have them. I'm off camera for that one, so I can I can weep away. Well, thank you, Andres, and everyone wishing you a fantastic patient experience week. You know, remember, it's everyone, no matter what your role is in the health system, we all, in our roles, impact the patient experience. Even if it's a role like mine that isn't direct, you know, I have a commitment to our employees that then impact the patient experience. We all play a part in that. So it's a thank you to everyone for the great work that you do, uh, like the stories we're hearing today that happen thousands of times a day across our 43,000 uh, employee system. So thank you, Andres. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Steve. Um, I'm going to move on. We, I'm going to bring up Tabitha Sansbury from Mount Sinai, South Nassau. We have a pair of physicians who were praised in a letter, Dr. Ficus Patel and Dr. Merdad Amami. I saw Dr. Patel. Did we get Dr. Amami? There we go. Okay, excellent. We're going to bring them up and share this one more story in this section. Thank you, Steve. Um, just a huge congratulations to everybody. Everyone's stories are so amazing, and I'm just floored at what everybody does on a daily basis, and it's just so heartwarming. So I would like to um, spotlight two of our physicians. So a grateful patient spouse wrote the following to appreciate neurologist Dr. Patel and Dr. Amami. My husband suffered a brain bleed and was admitted to the hospital where the stroke team quickly took action to stop the bleed and stabilize him. Dr. Patel and Dr. Amami are the doctors that we mainly dealt with. They are a great asset to the stroke team of this hospital. I am so grateful to Dr. Patel for his genuine concern for both my husband and me. He explained everything in detail, answered all my questions, and has been available for my calls and the calls of the staff at the rehabilitation center he was transferred to. Dr. Patel took the time to follow up with me after my husband was discharged from the hospital and continues to be in the loop of his care team as he works towards recovery at the rehab facility. All right. Yeah, thank you, Tabitha. So to our pair of doctors here, I'm going to focus on the comment that you showed genuine concern that stood out to me. And, you know, in healthcare, it's clear that we all care for our patients, but what do you think makes the difference from you know, a general sense of you know, my doctor's care to really feeling they really care, they genuinely concern, concern themselves with me and care about me as a, as a patient? And, and who would like to share a bit about that? Hi, Steve. Um, um, I just wanna say it's a great pleasure to be here and an honor to be recognized by Beyond the Badge. And yeah, you know, it's one of those situations where I always not only, you know, want to provide excellent care to the patient. I want to talk to the family. I want to understand what they're going through and make sure all their cancer and questions are answered and just going above and beyond the care that we're supposed to provide, you know, just be there in terms of communication, any questions they have, have them answered. And it's not only about caring for the patients in the hospital. I'm a big believer. Once they get discharged, mm -hmm. I want to have a plan in terms of coordination of care, continuity of care. And I've been able to talk to providers at the rehab facility and the patient's cardiologist and other providers involved with it, that patient's care. And I think just that type of, you know, concern and compassion, I think goes a long ways in terms of how patients ultimately end up doing. And I take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. And, and and that was mentioned. The follow-up is what really stood out as beyond, but they weren't expecting that you called and checked in. And how was that going at the rehab facility? So so well put. Dr. Mommy, did you have anything you'd like to add about, about your care for patients? Thank you very much for uh, inviting us. And it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, Dr. Patel, uh, I, I think like most of the credit is for Dr. Patel and I learned from him. He has like a genuine care towards the patient. 
And uh, as he mentioned, uh, it's very important, especially for uh, other uh, group of patients that have a specific needs to follow them uh, and give the uh, care to, to them. And also uh, help family with understanding the pathology and help the family mm -hmm. to deal with the situation. And uh, that's what we try to do here. And also I need to uh, mention the role of the nursing staff and uh, other teams. So we are represented of the right. like bigger team that uh, work in the background. Right, not just the caring, helping them understand, helping them deal with it. That emotional part, as well as the clinical part really came together and it is what this patient highlighted. So thank you both. And to all the team that you're recognizing out at Mount Sinai South Nassau, I really appreciate you joining us today. Okay, thank you. I have Gina is back. Christine, I'm going to bring Christine Pescator up uh, from Mount Sinai, Beth, Israel. I heard Gina Garzon made an excellent story that we want to share with uh, for you. It's in our Mount Sinai um, Stories of Excellence section. Uh, I want to get Christine up because she's got a second big event today. I want to give a highlight to the volunteers around our health system. It's volunteer appreciation. They're having a special event at the corporate offices later on today that I know Christine is, is leading as well. So congrats to our volunteers and thank you. And let's go to this Mount Sinai Beth Israel story for Gina. Thank you, Stephen, so much. I am excited to be here today to recognize Unit Secretary Gina Garzon of Five Daisian re um, really stood out for her remarkable care and professionalism when a rapid response team was called at the Petrie campus. Immediately when the alarm sounded, she contacted the rapid response hotline and dashed to prepare the crash cart. While doing this, she was also verbally calling on other members of the team to prepare for action. It was amazing to see how well composed and confident she was as she carried out her duties. Everyone on the team pulled their weight, but Gina was the standout of the day by the way she took her job so seriously and the care she showed for all for the ill patient. She is a true asset to the Mount Sinai Beth Israel team. Congratulations and thank you, Gina. Job well done. Yeah, thank you, Christine. And Gina, it sounds like you really stepped up into that I'm going to take the lead. I'm, you know, confidence went in, saw the emergency and just reacted with that confidence and professionalism. So I wonder if you could share your perspective of this story. What is that instinct that kicked in that inspired this, this response? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to be here. Uh, the only thing that I can say is uh, to perform this job, to do good is to have or to feel compassion, respect, to feel empathy to our patients. That's the main uh, concern that it mm -hmm. comes to me. You know, uh, for me, it's very important. Every minute count for a patient in the patient's life. Every minute counts. So for mm -hmm. me, every time that it comes to a code, any code. I put all my effort, my responsibility, my compassion, because if we delayed, you know, in any area, you know, it's about our patients. So I feel compassion for all of them and respect. That's my main goal. Beautifully said, Gina. Yentl, some love in the chat, cheering for you, and and that confidence and knowledge and understanding that drives your ability to quickly respond because you know every minute counts. This it's is what important. Gina does every single day. I am the smarter manager who hired her twelve years ago, and even smartest to keep her. So yes, the uh, uh, absolutely, you know, a perfectionist. She is keeping the unit together. The whole actually, uh, the staff is joining us and on the unit, and we are very excited. This is what she does, the most professional, the most, um, you, you know, um, dedicated. I cannot even have words to thank her. So, mm -hmm. in the behalf of the unit and the institution, I do want to congratulate her, and you know, of course, to thank her for what she does every single day, keeping all together and sane, <laughs> and you know, to helping our patients and family and everything. So, we are very, Wonderful. very, very happy for her. Thank you so much. Most brilliant move you ever made. Hiring oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear your team is here and cheering you on. Congratulations, Gina, and thank you for all you do. Thank you. Very well thank said. You. Thank you. And thank you, Christine. Um, yeah, I'm going to move on to uh, this next section, our uh, stories of excellence section. 
Uh, and we're going to start that off by going to Mount Sinai Morningside, actually, for the next two. Um, but before we go there, I want to quickly say there's additional stories in your program. One for Nikita Dalton Mobley, you'll see for the Network Patient Support Center. She couldn't make it here. Uh, unfortunately, she gave a beautiful response that you can read about her work and with oncology patients uh, and her commitment to community. It's really well written. I suggest you go into the program and read that. And another for Jasmine DeLeon Perez, uh, who could not be here from our new Mount Sinai Queens Crescent Street facility. Uh, another patient letter for her. Uh, but as we continue in our stories of excellence, I'm going to bring Tyler Geegan on up for the next two. First, from Mount Sinai Morningside Ambulatory. And that story is for our security supervisor, Albert Cano. Yes, thanks, Steve. Uh, congratulations, everyone. I'm excited to read this story. Uh, so Mount Sinai Morningside Security Operations Manager Albert Cano and his team responded to a call uh, for a highly disruptive and threatening patient who was causing a, a considerable disturbance and refusing to leave the premises without seeing her provider. After several attempts to de-escalate the situation, the New York Police Department assisted with escorting the patient off-site. Uh, that afternoon around 5 p.m., the provider involved in the incident approached the security desk, thanked them for their assistance earlier that day, and when the provider stated that she was concerned with walking to the subway alone after the incident, Al took it upon himself after his shift had ended to not only escort the provider to the train, but also to ride with her until it was his stop to ensure her safety. This display of humanity and service just above and beyond is, his duties is nothing less than simply excellence of character. Uh, we thank him for his continued service to our staff, our providers, and our patient safety. Uh, and we're so fortunate to have him on our team. And I just have to personally add that I have had the opportunity to have Al keep me safe on more than one occasion. And everyone at Morningside knows that, that he always has our back. So, so congratulations and thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tyler. And, and Al, this is really a beyond the badge, that above and beyond to care for safety of our colleagues. And it's such a priority at Mount Sinai across our health system. Uh, and I just wanna to turn to you, to if you could speak to that commitment you feel and make for the safety of others that led you to this inspiring demonstration of empathy for a colleague, of kindness for a colleague, and to ensure their safety. Well, this is why we come to work, right? I mean, we're in a hospital. Mm -hmm. And at times of just doing this good work and, and caring for people, you can grow weary at times. And I like to say that you could develop a case of work, work brain. And um, you, I've been working in this system for almost 10 years now, and moments like that is the reason why I'm here. If I can't accomplish anything else as a security operations manager, to foster and establish an environment of peace and safety. So what am I going to tell someone that is just coming from an adverse situation like that and they're disturbed and distraught. Hey, listen, you know, it's at the end of my shift. You know, of course, there's certain restrictions and rules and guidelines that go beyond the scope of what my department can cover. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, there are rules and policies in our hospital. Nothing is above the golden rule. And that is to treat someone the way you treat them. So come on. I'm not going to tell you to just to go off and, you know, good luck and see how you're going to get there. This woman's telling me that she's coming from Jersey City and she's never been in this neighborhood before. So I'm going to treat her the way I would treat my wife, my mom, my children, or myself. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And, you know, there are these moments that, like you said, we can get that work, Brent. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's day in, day out. We, you know, we know our role. We have what we expect and how that we expect our day to go. And then it takes someone special like you to, to see a moment and say, this is a moment. I can go beyond and I, I care enough to go beyond and not just settle into what I expected for my day and my commute home. Uh, and that is is atypical and but it's not atypical for you it sounds like that, that's a commitment you regularly make and what drives your purpose and commitment to this work and it was just beautifully said this is my mission and these are definitely the what i would like to exemplify amongst my staff and my team as well too thank you so much uh mr cano and, and thank you tyler for sharing it and I, I thanks on behalf of everyone at mount sinai morningside it sounds who knows you and recognizes this about the the commitment you make to their safety Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Tyler. 
All right, thank you. Tyler, we're going to keep you right here. We've got a second story. This one is for Dong Jun Moon, a nurse at Mount Sinai Morningside. And it's another story of excellence, these one-time remarkable stories that I just love. Absolutely. So this is such a heartwarming story that we wanted to share from a colleague uh, who shared how Dong Jun Moon, an 80 staff nurse, went the extra mile to take care of a patient. Moon overheard a patient talking about how her son had recently passed away and sharing how he would bring her a bouquet of flowers every Valentine's Day. The patient expressed how sad celebrating Valentine's Day was this year without her son to bring her flowers. Uh, all day, this nurse noticed the patient feeling sad, uh, but her mood was instantly brought up when Moon returned for his next shift and presented her with a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Uh, Moon is the perfect example of a nurse who truly goes above and beyond uh, for his patients, and there truly aren't words to describe our gratitude for making these memories and just re reducing suffering for our patients, whether it's clinical or, or otherwise. So congratulations and thank you. Yeah, thank you. Just like the previous story, it was this unique moment where you happened to overhear this and made this choice to go beyond, to go beyond the badge and do something special and make this heartfelt moment for this patient. So uh, I would love to hear, you know, how is this story a reflection of the empathy and the kindness you feel and you bring to all your patients in your everyday care? Okay, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm honored that you invite me here. And then I'm always thinking about when caring for patient and nursing based on physical symptoms and diagnosis is important. But I believe emotional care is also very essential. That's why I care for patient every day and try to treat them with kindness, just like I would treat my own family. Additionally, I make it a priority to attentively listen to each patient. Consequently, Upon hearing the patient's son's story, I couldn't simply disregard it. This experience was particularly rewarding for me as a nurse, as I felt a sense of happiness after presenting flowers to the patient. I, I can't even imagine the moment of you bringing in those flowers and trying to picture the emotional connection between you and the patient. And you said mm -hmm. it, it starts with listening and just being observant and being aware and being in that moment. And then to create this moment will be lifelong remembered by this patient and, and your commitment to both the clinical, like you said, and the emotional is role model excellence at Mount Sinai. And I, I can't thank you enough and for, for living this beautiful story. And I'm so happy I got to hear it and experience it and meet you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Congrats to you. Look at the love coming through in the chat and a pleasure to meet you, Dong Jun. Thank and you, Tyler. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, one more story in this section. I'm going to bring up Corey uh, Hammond from Pharmacy. You know, sometimes on occasion, this is a, a health system. Uh, so pharmacist Corey Hammond was recognized in a story that in healthcare, sometimes these examples are confidential um, and they're not appropriate to share in, the, in a public setting like this, although it was appropriate to share amongst our executive leadership backstage. So while I can't share some of the specific details of this story, I did want to bring Corey up uh, to recognize her. Um, she was proudly applauded for her commitment to patient safety, which is absolutely key and critical and something we all focus on uh, at Mount Sinai Health System. She properly followed the chain of command and proper patient safety protocols we have in place to ensure the safety of our patients. Uh, but in the way she did it uh, to prevent errors, that diligent work and that proper follow through is really celebrated by leadership. So Corey, although we can't share the, the specific details of the case, your commitment to safety is strong uh, and your role model in this work. And I'd love to turn it to you to, to talk about how that drives everything you do as a pharmacist here at Mount Sinai. It's an honor to be here. It's so rewarding um, to be recognized. So thanks for having me. Um, and just lean it forward a little bit till we pick you up in your sorry. microphone. There you go. Sure. Sorry, is that better? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, just my commitment to patient safety, you know, like as pharmacists, we're the gatekeepers of medication. And mm -hmm. if we verify something, it's likely going to the patient. So mm -hmm. um, patient safety is always kind of at the forefront of my, man, my mind and the rest of the pharmacists that I work with, especially in pediatrics. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, it's a really good thing we're really thinking of and kind of to um, go along with what everyone's saying it's uh, you have to think about it if it's a family member that's getting this medication um, you want it to be the right dose 
um, right rate of infusion, concentration, all the things that we think about as pharmacists. Um, so I'm always thinking about that before I get to the patient and um, what's going to be most appropriate for them and um, safest for them. So uh, just a couple of tools that I like to use is really effective communication with the team. Mm -hmm. If I have questions about a medication or need clarification, um, I chat the team and I try to explain my thought process and why I might have pause about something. And um, with the providers and the nurses, just to work some collaborative discussion on what's most appropriate and why I might think like I need to clarify something and then the second is just to not be afraid to go off the chain of command. Um, it's a little intimidating sometimes yes. um, to go up to a fellow or attending or whoever just to get further clarification. So just not being afraid to go that route if you just want to have a further discussion um, just for patient safety. So when you know the patient safety is important, take you know, speak up and share what you did, and that's what you did, and you made sure it was right, uh, and that communication was so so critical. And you know, to me, I go back to uh, Albert's story with the the work brain. I'm gonna keep using that. You gave me a new new term. Like you can get into that mode of like, Look, this is what I got, this is what I do, but you have to be in every single time focused on that patient safety. This is going to my mother. This is going to my child. Making sure it's right. And that commitment is in place. And when followed properly, you know, we have the great stories like you have here. All right. Well, thank you so much, Corey. Thank you for your insights into the, the way you pr promote patient safety uh, in your role in pharmacy. And we're so glad we got to, to celebrate you and hear from you today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're going into our next section. Like I said, um, STAR, we have to be on our network to do. Uh, so make sure you're connected to Mount Sinai's network. The link is in our resources tab here in your webinar. This next section is appreciation by colleagues. It came from, a lot of times it's from a star appreciation that is so loved by leaders. They say, look at this incredible star, so detailed, so powerful. This is the one I want to share when it's my turn on the huddle. We're going to go first to Quimberly Villamer de Leon from Mount Sinai Hospital. So God's favor, I'm going to bring you back to share this story, which was actually three stars that all combined to celebrate Kim. Congratulations, Kim. Here's the story. Nursing and patient experience leaders combined to express their appreciation of Quimberly de Leon, stating the following. Kim is a humble and extremely dedicated leader. She's constantly creating ways to focus on safety and build teamwork amongst her team and across all disciplines. Kim is eager to learn and is not afraid to take on challenges. She has utilized staff feedback for safety initi initiatives, such as embedding daily mechanisms or thinking about things like healthcare associated infections with her team. Her, they just achieved over 385 days without a catheter associated urinary tract infection. She is motivated and enthusiastic to promote creative ideas and celebrates her team for their compassion, dedication, and clinical acumen. Kim is a role model for us all in teamwork, safety, and excellence. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, thank you. And my, my safety sign is getting a lot of action today, the safety value today in these stories. And I got to share, if people get the HCAPS uh, analytics tool, I just saw it come out yesterday. I got to jump in. I saw a story right away from KCC5 North, a patient comment just from that tool that got sent out that said the staff at KCC5 North was the most wonderful staff I ever met even the food staff. I told my family I was having fun in the hospital. They couldn't believe it. They said only me. Thank you. And that was another one that just came out yesterday for your team, Kim. And, and you know, the, this whole story hits on the idea uh, that the patient experience starts with the employee experience that you clearly care so much about. And how do you promote teamwork on your unit? And how important is that teamwork when it comes to patient safety? Well, today I bring my team with me. This is not just me, and it's the entire team that makes everything possible. Uh, one thing is I always tell patients that they are a part of our team. We give them tasks and homework for their recovery, and it makes them more proactive about their care. So, And I also believe that a team of leaders is a team of givers. Mm -hmm. uh, developing leaders among the staff is an essential task for any leader, 
And that mindset already postures me to coach, nurture, and mentor. Um, we've, we're have we very, very creative. We like to have fun in Five North, and I'm glad a patient had fun with us as well. Uh, we um, Each staff member actually receives handwritten notes by me sent to their home addresses, and that's why I tell them to always update their Sinai Central. <laughs> Uh, the second one is we also normalize recognition. We like to use our stars. Uh, the staff likes to actually give stars to each other. Uh, we support their fresh ideas. We talk about each other out loud during Thanksgiving. We're very cheesy as a team. Uh, we also have music therapy. Uh, we have tea time for the staff. I just want to acknowledge uh, spiritual care, pastoral care for helping us out with that. We have monthly celebrations with cakes that are baked by our pharmacist. Um, and also we have we like healthy competitions. So during huddles, we make it fun. We have recognition and we also have pop quizzes for the staff. And that also allowed us to prepare for the joint commission mm -hmm. successfully. And of course, we empower them to make decisions whenever appropriate. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for those decisions to happen, but in the long run, the staff has buy-in and the staff is very proud of the decisions they make because they are making the experience um, for the patients and it has their touch, so they like it very much. You'll see my team in their yellow gowns singing and dancing to the tune of happy birthday for patients. Um, I love I love leading my team and I hope that they really understand and feel that they are special. Everything takes a village and I will not yeah. be here today without them. We're in, I think everyone here wants to go to the Gemba right now and check out things on your, your unit. Everyone wants a chance to see the, the joy that you're bringing to your patients uh, and just wonderfully said and, and wonderful leadership examples to embed recognition and appreciation in the employee experience and all you do and how it impacts them, the patients. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kim. And thank you, God's favor. We've got three stories to go with you. I'm going to go to Mount Sinai, Brooklyn next. Katrina Bravo, come on up. We have a story for Gavin Schlagman, who was recognized uh, by his colleagues out at Brooklyn. Hi, Gavin. And Katrina, Hi. let's hear this story. Hi, and congrats to everyone who's been recognized. Um, so I'm presenting... Three East Register nurse, Gavin, who embodies a combination of clinical excellence patient safe handling, safe nursing practice, interdisciplinary collaboration, and teamwork. His leadership comments on how he loves nursing and all it takes. Though only a few years out of nursing school, the more experienced nurses reach out to him for help when having difficulty with IV access and checking on new drips for the most ill patients. He is also very engaged in the training of new nursing students and newly hired nurses on orientation. He recognizes great potential and never gets tired of precepting and engaging, encouraging our new nurses. Gavin is presently enrolled in the nurse practitioner program, and we hope he stays on his path here to become a nurse leader. Thank you, Gavin. All right. Thank you, Katrina. Gavin, so I'd love to turn it to you to tell us a little bit more about your passion for precepting and training uh, as a yeah, mentor for new nurses and, and what brings you pride and passion in this aspect of, of the work you do at Mount Sinai Brooklyn. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I am a firm disbeliever of nurses eat their young. I think it's a very toxic culture that was brought up on this community. Uh, and I'm just personally trying to fight that. I want to encourage my new grads, my orientees, my students all to love what they do and to come here with a brave face because at the end of the day, that comes on to their patients. We, uh, I personally want to teach eventually towards the end of my career and mm -hmm. this is just the perfect stepping stone for that so you're building your entire career of nursing education so that later on you, you go fully into education and you're gonna live it every day as a, nur a nurse at brooklyn right now yep it's wonderful well thank you i i appreciate that celebration and our new nurses and all new employees you know i do some orientations for new hires how important it is to have someone to look to and be feel supported by when you start a new job. So thank you for being that that person and that commitment that you bring to new hires and new nurses at Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gavin, and thank you, Katrina. You know, our final section uh, is coming up on our employee spotlight. There are two more in this section in your program. Read their stories, Julie. Juliana Bastone uh, was praised for her high quality uh, care and excellence, and as well as social worker Elizabeth Rodriguez in Mount Sinai Hospital's emergency department. She wrote uh, a response, beautiful. She's traveling today, really wanted to be here. Um, so she wrote a beautiful response. Do check out the program after we wrap up. 
to see more stories uh, that you can check out. Actually, Amanda Aspuqueta couldn't be here today from outside of hospital faculty practice. Late, late call out. Um, uh, so we're sorry we missed her, but she also had a great story uh, and we celebrate Amanda as well. But I want to go to who's here. Carol Ann Gennaro is only by audio, so I, I promise you she's not going to be on screen. She's listening in. Kathy, I'm going to go to you for this story from Mount Sinai Health System Facilities Leadership for Carol Ann Gennaro. Hey, Steve, thank you. Such special stories today. Really wonderful. This is about Carol Ann Gennaro. Project Manager Carol Ann Gennaro with our Critical Infrastructure and Special Projects team recently stepped in to assist with a challenging project to replace the dialysis water treatment system at the Mount Sinai Hospital. This project had to be completed within a very specific and limited time frame, and neither the Departments of Planning, Design, and Construction or Engineering had the staff to support the project. With no hesitation, Carol Ann stepped in and worked diligently to deliver the project as designed and, and within the specified window of opportunity to minimize the impact on patients and clinical staff. She always has a positive disposition and is willing to work evenings and weekends to ensure projects are completed on schedule. Carol Ann is a talented and dedicated employee and a most valued member of the Mount Sinai Health System real estate and facilities team. All right, thank you, Kathy. And Carol Ann, can you tell us a bit about the, the passion you have for this work? When you get into a, a new facilities project, what gets you excited about it? And what, what drives the incredible dedication you put into your projects and your work? Hi, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm very honored for the recognition and kind words for my leadership. Um, as far as the work I do for Mount Sinai, I, I love it. I love stepping into a new project and open opportunities to learn and grow professionally on proving quality and operations for our critical MEP systems, um, working on projects that the main focus is, you know, on, on the health and wellness of our patients and staff. Mm -hmm. So it's very rewarding and I'm very honored. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. To know that that project is going to impact patients, I'm sure drives that emotional commitment. It gives you that sense of purpose. And, and I love to hear how you see everyone as a learning and growth opportunity as well. It's excellent. Thank you so much. Glad we got to share it. And thank you, Kathy, for reading that story. And we're to our big finale. I told Martha Herrera she was our finale today. She's from Digital and Technology Partners. Our final story, I'm going to have Seema come on up and read this wonderful story for, for Martha. Great. Thanks, Steve. And congratulations to everyone recognized today. Truly heartwarming stories. Um, Martha Herrera is a shining example of excellence in digital and technology partners. She has been consistently delivering high quality service and solutions to our clients. She's quick to respond to escalations and resolve issues with efficiency and professionalism. She's also a leader in her team spearheading the rounding efforts that have become the model for workplace technology services throughout the system. Martha has a pleasant disposition and a positive attitude that inspires others. She pays attention to detail and follows up on every task until completion. She always goes above and beyond to exceed expectations and ensure customer satisfaction. Martha is a valuable asset to our organization, and we are proud to have her on our team. Congratulations, well, thank Martha. You. Thank you, Zima. And Martha, so your leadership describes you as a shining example of excellence in digital and technology partners. How would you describe the example that you you try to set, that you bring with you, uh, and what excellence looks like in your work that you commit to every day? So thank you for having me on. It really is a pleasure to be here, and it's really rewarding to be recognized and hear all the kind feedback. Um, I have to give all the credit, honestly, to our fabulous WTS teams. They work 365 days a year, 24-7, to provide user and support. Um, I'm really filled with pride to see their dedication, their perseverance, and everything they do to make sure that our end users have the best support possible. Um, for me, it's really about showing empathy to our end users and really actively listening to what they're going through so that we can provide that support mm -hmm. and resolve issues, escalate issues as quickly as possible, and also focus on our proactive support initiatives so that we catch these issues before they actually impact the end users and patient care. Um, my teams are also super wonderful about staying engaged and you know, improving their knowledge base, their skills, so that as technology changes, we're right there to provide the same level of support that we always have. So I'm really, really proud of them and, and I share this acknowledgement with them. 
Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Martha. And I'd love to hear someone use empathy, not when think we think of it with patients, but empathy is a value that we bring to our colleagues as well. And you talk about the end user and having empathy and listening to them and understanding what their needs are drives your work as well. Empathy is all of us, you know, is a value for every role, not just what we do with our patients that is, is so clear, which is why in patient experience, it's all of us as well. So your work we know impacts. So happy patient experience week to you and your team. Uh, and how you celebrate the great work you do for our patients through dig digital and technology partners. Thank, thank you, Martha, you. and thank you, Seema. And everyone, that is a wrap on our April episode, highlighting the stories that were shared on the huddle from March. We are back uh, every single month. So if this is your first time here and you wanna be inspired like this every single month, we're back on May 23rd with our next episode. A story was shared this morning on the huddle that story will be shared on May 23rd, as well as all the stories that were shared on the huddle throughout April. 